Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch the video that accompanies this month's Geospatial Tip of the Month. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of loading an ECW and dealing with a projection issue that you might find. Specifically, if you were to load an ECW or I'm guessing many file formats that aren't compressed, uh, compressed imagery formats, um, we don't really work with too many compressed imagery formats here, so I haven't had a chance to test it. But I can tell you this is definitely a problem with an ECW that's supposed to be projected in a state plane in the Louisiana coordinate system. So let me go ahead and show you what happens. So first let me go ahead and load my ECW tile. And you'll see that it has an unknown spatial reference, um, but it's still going to load and it's going to come up with some kind of units that it's reading from the file itself. Uh, next, I'm going to load a shape file that is actually correctly projected, and you'll see that they line up. So obviously, it's assuming the correct projection. As we talked about, there's the on-the-fly projecting, and it, it will make some assumptions about that first layer you're loading. And if the units of the second one line up, even without knowing what those units truly are, they'll, they'll look like they line up properly. And if you go into the layers and you go to your properties, you'll see that it doesn't have a map. There's no coordinate system um, if you go over here and take a look at that as well. So, let me show you how you can solve that problem. So let's go ahead and load a new session. <clears throat> First, I'm going to load my pipeline route. And you're going to see that it's a much longer area than you saw. And you see down here that it instantly has feet. So we know pretty quickly that this actually has a projection. Now I'm going to go ahead and load that same ECW tile you saw in the past. And you'll see it's still not going to recognize the projection. So this isn't really a solution uh, to the, the true problem, which is the ECW isn't projected but at least it's a quick workaround. So you can see it loads in the correct location, and then if we were to right click on properties, or layers and go to properties, you can now see that it actually has a coordinate system when you go into here. Um, so we've achieved at least part of the process, but definitely not exactly what we wanted to do. So what you could do if you wanted to go through the process, and it'll take you a little bit of time, especially if you have a, a large data set, is you can actually mosaic these all these files into a single raster and convert it to a TIFF. And then once you've done that, the projection will be set. So let me just show you quickly what that looks like here. And you're going to go into the data management tools and then into your raster. And then I believe it's in a raster data set. And then you're going to go to mosaic to new raster. Double click on it. And you can input a bunch of layers at once or a bunch of uh, files at once. If you just go to the, the folder button, click on it. Go to your first one in your list. Hold down the shift button. Go to the last one. Press add. It'll take a couple seconds and you'll see that you're going to have all your files loaded. Next, we're going to tell it to where you would want to output. In this case, it would be the TIFF uh, mosaic folder that I created. Um, you would give it a file name. You want to make sure that it ends in .tiff. That's what you're going to go output. Now, this is where you would set the spatial reference for that file you're exporting. Um, what I would do in this case is it's much easier to do in, in import. So if you go up to the top here and you click that little arrow button down and go to import, the shape file that I showed you before would actually have that projection and it's going to add all the information I need so we are sure that we get the right zone and the right units and then the right datum on there. Um, keep it as an 8-bit unsigned unless there's a reason to change that. That's going to be for most data sets. You're going to want to make sure you tell it the number of bands. This is color in this case. So um, I'm not going to actually go through this process. It's quite, as I said, it takes quite a long time and you would just see the computer sitting here cranking away on data. Let me show you what the output of this would look like. Um, as I've already done it in the past, just to have a copy. And here's what you see. Um, you're going to have to go in here and right click on your properties and go to symbology. And you're going to want to turn off because it's going to try to double stretch this imagery. That's a nifty little feature if you have 16 bit data, but most of us aren't loading 16 bit data. So typically you're going to want to turn that off. And once you turn it off, you can see that the images look quite nice. They line up with the pipeline route and they're actually projected. Let me prove that to you um, just by, give me a second here, starting a new session, loading that one first. And you can see that once again, it actually has the, um, excuse me, go to the layers and go to the properties. And you can see that this does have that state plane coordinate system. And if I were to go ahead and load my pipeline route now, you would see it lines up. And again, you can just go into your properties change your symbology, get rid of that double stretch that it's applying since it doesn't recognize it's 8-bit. And there you go. You are all set. You have a, a nice projected TIFF file that came from your ECW files to start with. Much larger file size, but sometimes that's what the job calls for. Thanks for taking the time to watch and we'll see you next time.